on the next part, we are going to draw the snake, which is going to look something like this. To make this logic work, we have to cover a bit of theory. Most importantly, the snake is going to consist of several body points. All of those have an X and a Y attribute. The way you want to think about it, if this is our grid with the rows and the columns, we might have a point here, a point here, a point here, and a point here. And these points we are using to, for now, draw a rectangle and later a graphic. Remember that these points are always the top left, which means the rectangles would be here for this point, then the second point would have a rectangle around there, then we would have the rectangle for this point, and another rectangle up here. These points we can also use to move the snake, but that's going to come in the next part. For now, let's jump into the code and let's draw a snake. All of that I want to do in a separate Python file. So let's create a new file and save it as, let's call it snake.py. And there, first of all, we need from settings and we want to import everything. That way we have access to all of this. After that, we can create a class called snake, which doesn't have any inheritance, but as always, we will need a dunder init method. With self, once again, no need for custom parameters. In there, for now, we will need three major things. Number one, we have to get access to the display surface. That way we can draw on the window right away. Basically, the display surface currently we only have available in the main class, but we also have to have access to it in the snake class. And for that, Pygame has a separate function called pygame.display.get underscore surface. This gets you the display surface. After that, we have to define a couple of points for the body, all of which I want to store in a body attribute. And for that, we want to use list comprehension once again, although this one is going to be much simpler. We basically want to get a point for call in range. And then we want to define the start length of the snake, which is three. We, at the moment, have a grid of columns and rows. I believe in total we have 10 rows and we have 16 columns, although the specific numbers really don't matter. What we want to do to get started is to create a snake that looks something like this. When the snake begins, I want it to have a length of three columns, so one, two, and three. Also, all of these cells should be right next to each other on the horizontal axis. Because of that, I only care about the column, the row is always going to be the same. As a matter of fact, if you look at settings, there we have a start row and a start column. The start row is not going to change. And the way we are going to use these numbers is instead of a point, we want to create a vector2, which we create with pygame dot vector2. A vector2 is just a point in space that we can change quite easily, and it always has an x and a y attribute. And each of these points are going to define one body part of our snake. So now we have to figure out these two dimensions, and y is the easier one, because this one is simply the start row, so this we don't have to touch. For x, what I want to do is I want to get the start column the one we have defined in settings, so start column. And from that, we want to subtract the column that we are getting from the for loop. The way this one is going to work is imagine we only have a couple of columns. And I want the snake to start here, which I think is column five. This would be the start column. The next body part should be on the left of this first body part. It is really important that the first body part is all the way on the right, because this one later on is going to become the head. Which means to get this second body part, we want to get the first body part and then subtract one column from that, which is what we have done with this logic here. This we keep on doing until we run out of loops in our for loop. In our case, the start length is three, so we are going to create three points. As a matter of fact, let me print what we get inside of self.body. Although to see that, we have to create an instance of the snake. 
which means I want from snake import the snake object inside of main.py. And then in the dunder init method of the main class, I want to create an attribute self.snake, which should be the snake class. If I now run main.py, we don't really care about the window. What we care about is what we have printed out. We now have a list with three vectors. The first one is on position five and five. The first five is the column, the second five is the row. And the row always stays the same, so this one we can ignore entirely. What is more interesting is the first number, because this one changes. The first one is five, the second one is four, and the final one is three. That way we know the first point is all the way to the right, and then we keep on going left. So that looks really good. Also, I should mention one important thing. And let me open the game window again. When we are creating the game points, we work in a grid position, which means the top left cell, this one, would have a coordinate of 0 and 0, while the second cell, this one, would have a coordinate of 1 and 0. But these numbers are grid positions, they are not pixel positions. Meaning, while this cell here starts on the coordinate 1 and 0, the actual pixel positions, so the top left, for example, of this cell, would have a value of 80 and 0. I hope the difference makes sense. For the snake position, we want to work with coordinates in this grid because this is much easier to calculate. But when we actually want to display all of this, we have to convert it to pixel positions. I will explain that actually right now. So what we want to do for now is to display the body of the snake. And for that, I want to create a, let's call it a draw method. This one doesn't need any custom parameters, but we do need self. And basically all we want to do is for point in self dot body. With that, we're getting the various vectors from the list. And those we can use with pygame.draw.rect. For that, once again, we will need three arguments. A surface, a color, and then a rectangle. Now the rectangle, I want to store inside of a separate variable. And as a reminder, we are creating this with pygame.rect, where we have to specify four points, the left, the top, the width, and the height of this rectangle. So all we have to figure out now is cover these attributes, and then we should be able to see the snake. Doing all of that is going to be your exercise. I want you guys to figure out the arguments for the draw function and call it in main.py. By the end of it, you should see the snake. And before you continue, a tip, you can access the vector attributes with point.x and point.y. That way you get the horizontal and vertical coordinate. Pause the video now and try to figure this one out. Let's get started with the easier arguments. Surface is super easy because we only have a single surface, self.display surface. For the color, you can just use a random one. Let's reuse red, it doesn't matter. The rectangle is next, and this we are defining up here. And for that, we need left, top, width, and height. Width and height are once again really easy because those are simply going to be the cell size. I can copy them from main.py and paste them in there and in there. Now we have to figure out the left and the top. What you might be tempted for this one is for the left, use point.x, and for the top, point.y. Let's actually work with those for now, which means inside of main.py, when we are calling the run method, I want to, after we are drawing the background, call self.snake and then the draw method. If I now run all of this, we are getting a couple of rectangles, but they seem to be in the wrong position. They should be roughly down here, but instead they're all the way up there. The reason why this happened is that we are using the coordinate position instead of the pixel positions. So at the moment we have three coordinate points. One would be all the way here, and the position for this one is five and five. These five and five should stand for the coordinate, meaning this would be one, two, three, four, and five, and then the same on the vertical axis, so this point should actually be down here. The reason why it isn't is that we forgot to multiply this value with the cell size. Basically, this 5 means that we want to go 5 cells to the right. 
one cell, two cells, three cells, four cells, and five cells. In effect, all we really have to do when we want to convert these coordinate numbers to pixel numbers is we want to multiply them with the cell size. And now if I run main.py again, this is looking much better. And that is covering another important part of the game. Now there's one thing where you might have tripped up, and that is where to call the draw method. Because an easy thing to get wrong is to call the draw method before draw bg or before display surface.fill. If I call it before both of these methods and run the game again, you can't see anything. The reason for that is that the draw order really matters. Basically what happens at the moment is that we are drawing the snake, and then on top of that we are drawing the background color and the checkerboard pattern. As a consequence, you wouldn't be able to see the snake. As a matter of fact, to emphasize that a bit more, I want to place the self.displaySurface.fill inside of drawBG. And once again, it's really important that you call it before the for loop. If you call it afterwards, you are drawing the plain background on top of the checkerboard pattern, so it wouldn't be visible. But if we do it like this, this feels much cleaner. And now in the run loop, we have the background and then the snake. So this is quite easy to understand. At least I hope it is. But anyway, with that, we have covered another important part. So next up, we can work on the apple.